I'd just like to let everybody know before we start the podcast, there may be the odd swear word during fighting on the inside. Also, some of the subjects that we cover, especially those surrounding mental health, some people may be affected by these conversations. If you are, then you can find information and help in the show notes. But please, other than that, enjoy the show. So another massive shout out to our big sponsor, Mangata. Any companies or small businesses, large businesses out there looking for payroll, look no further. With 20 years of UK and global payroll experience, you'll be incredibly good hands. They've got very competitive margins and very, very easy to set up for agencies and candidates. And once a candidate has been referred, they will be contacted within 30 minutes. You really can't ask for much more. So you know what to do. Go down to the description, click on their website to check them out. It's mangatapayuk.com. And thank you so much to Mangata for sponsoring this podcast. Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Fighting on the Inside. As always, I need to say a massive thank you to our sponsors, Mangata, Real Power of One and Wow Hydrate. Without these guys, we couldn't be doing what we're doing. And as you know, this podcast is all in aid of anti-knife crime charity, Gloves Up, Knives Down. I'm excited about this one personally because we have um, the handsome, charismatic. <laughs> used, used to be. Used to be handsome. <laughs> um, I, I, we got to say the biggest promoter in the globe at this <clears throat> at this precise moment, um, and the fellow with more one-liners than than anyone I've ever heard. So much so that he's got a whole, I think, no context turn. Is that? Yeah, that's have, the you, one. have you seen that? Yeah. Have I seen it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've seen it. I was going to say, it. mate, I've it's genius. It. I've seen it. So, Mr. Eddie Hearn, I'm sure you know who we're talking about. So, Eddie, how are you, mate? Thanks I'm good, for thank you. Yeah, no, good. I was even more happy that I found out this studio was 20 minutes from my office. So, uh, 20. Well, yeah, good to be here. Um, the podcast world's quite amazing, really, isn't it? I mean, how many podcasts are there? I mean, I've got one. I mean, I'm sure, Johnny, you, if you haven't got one, Johnny, you're about to have one soon. And, <laughs> I'm surprised you find the time. Yeah, I, I, I like, you know, I like to talk. And um, I, I just feel that... Um, you know, of course, I spend most of my life talking about the shows and stuff like that. But I feel like sometimes podcasts are like an extension of, of just a chat in a pub or a bit of therapy, really, sometimes. It you know isn't I mean? it? It's weird. It's, it's weird how you can just listen to people talk about pretty much anything. And I think when you enjoy a conversation with somebody, you're effectively just sitting there and enjoying a conversation that you're not a part of. Mm. Um, and I find it pretty fascinating. But like I, I said... Talking, talking allows you to kind of understand your mind. Yep. and your position you know people say it's good to talk and these are kind of an extension of that mm, you know? exactly so you, you sometimes you don't realize actually you're talking about what it takes you know where you are at the moment how you're thinking all these things and, and that, i think that's good to sometimes keep you balanced because a lot of time you're just working working and not really thinking about what you're doing how you're feeling or where you're going well this is what oh, i guess that's a good segue for me to ask this question because obviously you promote shows all over the world now um your biggest promoter in the uk definitely biggest promoter on the globe all in europe across america um you've got all your shows on the zone you've got some of the biggest stars what what does a day in the life of eddie hearn look like and how on earth do you manage all that um i was actually talking about this last night i'm i'm a robot really like yesterday i did all these things you know so i woke up i took my kids to school then I drove to the office. I had about three or four Zooms. Then I went to the gym. Then I came back. Then I had an ice bath, which I've been doing at the moment. Game, yeah, game, game Wim Hof. Honestly, yeah, yeah, honestly, I, I, can't, I can't push this hard enough. And I don't even have an ice bath business yet. So, but yeah, so did that. Then drove up to London for a meeting with the zone. Then went to another meeting with, I think, some lawyers or something like that. Then did another media interview. Then drove back to the school to get my daughter and then like and then sort of got home and sort of went oh and i drove as well right because i like driving i don't like having a driver i like driving it's your reason. podcast huh? yeah 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 <laughs> but so and i've done all these things and i get home at night and i think i don't even remember today <laughs> you know what i mean and then, and then i sit down and just so for me like one of the worst things you can do and one of the worst things about not this podcast but just the whole sort of 
digital era that we live in is people overcomplicate stuff, right? right? So, and my, you know, I'm sort of built off the foundations of my dad, really, who is probably the most mentally strong person. Like you would never, there's, there would never be a crack in his mental health, right? The answer to him is, you know, you know I had a couple of tough times last year with the Connor Ben stuff and stuff like that. And he would say to me, you are right?" And I'd go, yeah, it's fine. Bit of shit, really, but yeah, sort yourself out. Don't worry. You know, and he's like, he, his, his answer would be, old school. You just look in the mirror and tell yourself you're happy. It's all this bollocks. <laughs> you know, I'm not happy. I don't feel. Shut up. Get on with it. You know, but that's the old school mentality. Now it's more like, are you okay? Yeah. Right. And the answer is not really. Like, are you ever okay? You know, you're gonna have good days. You're gonna have bad days sometimes. But now it's like a, you know, there's no real sort of distinguishment between having a bad day or a rough time or actually being depressed or feeling down all this stuff. And I get all that. And, you know, I think people are much more understanding about that. But in answer to your question, my day is really what I'm programmed to do now. So, and now I'm kind of like what we said earlier off, off, off camera. I'm the front man. So I'm just like wheeled out everywhere, right? So you've got incredible people in our organization, you know, 50 or 60 staff now in our boxing division worldwide. Who are geniuses? Frank Smith, probably the best operator in, in boxing. Oh, Sean Palmer, our, Frank, our CEO. Yeah. And I'm just like the guy they wheel out. Right. And, and I'll just be told, I'll say, what am I doing today? And they'll say, right, 10 o'clock you're doing this, 10 o'clock you're 11 o'clock you're here, then you're driving there, then you drive. It's a bit like today. You know, so managed to get a gym <coughs> session this like morning, driving here, going yeah. back to the office, got a meeting with Connor Ben at 1.30, I've got a WBC call at 2.30, I've got a fighter. I haven't signed him yet, so I can't tell you his name. Coming in at three <laughs> thirty, at four, yeah, and it's literally like that. So I, I know it might be a stupid question. I can remember asking Paul Dempsey this, and and I was surprised at his answer. Is boxing your first love? Yeah, probably unintentionally. Like you, know, you for some people, you got boxing was in your blood, but for me, I found boxing at eight years old. Mm. Right, so I guess you can't say it was in your blood, but it it was just something, as we all know, and the, one of the reasons you know, you're here is because you love boxing. You you know what it can do for a, a young individual. Away from that, there's the drama, there's the heartache. There's It's the most unique sport ever. For me, my development in boxing was unintentional, but it was being around things that just made me fall in love with the sport. And it became part of my life, kind of like without really knowing it was going to be part of my life. And when I was, you know, walking around at Eubank's house at, nine ten when i was in germany watching you win the european title with my dad like at, when there was a riot at ringside you know when i see of by you go on yeah pretty much <laughs> when, when i saw you know when you see jim mcdonald get knocked out by kenny vice and carried back to the change room on a table unconscious with his eyes open in a dressing room you know all these things that i experienced as a kid like i never thought oh one day son you're gonna work in boxing i was just a kid and i kind of just found myself in it in the end. You know, I, I, even in my professional life, I wasn't going to do boxing. I'd seen what it did to my dad and what sort of person it made him. Mm -hmm. I saw him walk away from the sport because he didn't want to be in that world anymore, that person. So I sort of thought, you know, and, and, then, and then it just reared its head. And, and one of the biggest assets I have is all of that experience. You know, and that's when I first started in boxing, when I was, I don't know, late 20s or, or 30. That's when you started working in Yeah, there. pretty much. You know, the prize fighter and Audie Harrison. Yeah. People mm -hmm. kind of looked at me as if to say, what does this guy know? Right? The reality is, is I was I was a student of the sport. When you didn't even know you was a reading, student. Reading, yeah, exactly. you know, Barry Hugman's boxing yearbook, knowing every fighter, knowing every opponent, watching fights inside out, being in changing rooms, watching fighters win, lose, cry, get their hand wrapped, make weight, all this kind of stuff, you know, at... 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And again, not, not to get that experience for future life, but that's one of the things that I've got. And now sitting here at 43, I have the opportunity to say to people or fighters, I've been around the sport for 35 years. I can't even believe I'm saying that, but that's the that's the truth. And not around the sport of, oh, you know, I was I went to watch a couple of shows. I saw everything. You know, I heard everything. Front, front and, front uh, and back everything. of the house. Yeah. You know, I mean, like, not, you know, you're, you're a good, example of what we would go through as a family like when you boxed carlos de leon you know i know it wasn't your greatest night but mm. that for us is like that was a massive night for our family 
as you know, it was my parents' wedding anniversary. <laughs> we went up there. They went up oh, to watch Johnny win the world title. No, but this is a this is part of development. It's not, yeah. you know, it was a draw. It wasn't a great fight. Yeah, my dad was so excited. Us. He was thinking, fucking, we're going to win a world title at Sheffield. You know, it was a draw. He was really pissed off. Like, he, and he, all of the stuff that I experience now as a man, as a father, as, you know, is like what I saw him be like with me. Is that, as a is that my old work ethic? Is how it is because I think when you talk robot, I'm thinking, when do you sleep, man? Yeah, but it's like Johnny. The best way to describe it is is you are a product of your environment. So you're a product of the Ingle Gym. Mm. I'm a product of Barry Hearn, right? So the way that you're brought up and and the way that you're taught is the foundations for the person you are. Yeah, it's not always right. Like there's a lot of ways that my dad raised me that I would never raise my own children that way. But it's in me, so it's hard kind of not to. But I, I understand it. It's not like people think it's really weird when I tell stories about how my dad fathered me, especially like the sparring stories and like <laughs> trying to beat one, the shit yeah. out of me and stuff like, you know, like, but that's for me. And everything was built. And this is why I feel so passionately about boxing, the community and sport. Everything was built around sport for me, right? So sport was everything and it taught you everything, right? And when you played sport, the only reason you played sport is to win. Mm. And the only reason you do anything in life is to win. And if you don't win, you've lost, right? And it's yeah. disaster. <clears throat> That's how I was brought up. So when I'd come home from a game of football or a cricket match, you know, my dad would go to me, how many runs did you get today? Oh, six. You know, I started well, but I got the, oh, six. Useless. What's the matter? With you? <laughs> go out there. I'll right, Let's go out in the garden. You know, I'll throw. I'll throw hundred balls at you or whatever. And you know, <laughs> straight and, back to but, training. But it wasn't like, oh, God, son, great that you took part. The participation it's amazing. badge. Yeah. You know, and also he would look at me and think, probably thinking, you spoiled little kid. I don't want you to be that kid. You know. So everything was like, you. <clears throat> although I probably was spoiled, and I, you know, I had a great upbringing. There was still the the buildings of you don't get given anything. You know, he was the guy, if you've, you're taking five penalties and you've missed four and you're eight years old, you let, as a parent, you let the last one through your legs, don't you? He tips it around the corner and makes sure you don't score. And he goes, yes, you didn't get one. I saved them all. And you're thinking, you know, and even now I see my daughter playing table tennis with my dad. And like, I think a couple of weeks ago, it was like 21-19, he won the game. And she's so close to beating him. She hasn't beaten him yet. And he's like, he's 73. He's like... Yes, you know, and she, uh, but that's like that's the family. It's not. It's not yeah. for everyone. But so for me, the the foundations are just get up, give every day everything, work as hard as you can, don't moan, be grateful, mm. and win. That's it. Now we live in a world where that that can't. You know, it's a lot deeper than that. But actually, it's not really. You know, I know happiness is important. I know feeling good's important. Having a strong mind is important. But the reality is, get up every day, work as hard as you can. Obviously, enjoy, try and enjoy what you yeah. do or find something you, you enjoy. But the reality is, consistency with hard work and ability is unbeatable. Do you enjoy it? Yeah, I, I enjoy I mean, it's... I don't want to be... You know, I think what I've realised as the older I've got is you don't have to be or do the same as your dad. Do you know what I mean? So he's 73, 74. He's semi-retired, all right? I mean, like, he Is forces himself to have home. a day at home, like, yeah, yeah. fishing, walking the dog, but he's also in his office at home. And yeah. he can't, he loves it. It's in him. And, and maybe, you know, we'll play this interview back in 30 years and I will be still promoting shows. But for <laughs> me, this is just something, this is an obligation sometimes to me and my responsibility to, to continue his legacy of what he's done, right? Your, so, your dad was like years ahead of his time. <clears throat> I was telling somebody a story this morning coming in. <clears throat> and I remember your dad introduced a pension, a pension scheme to mm, fighters. Mm. And the establishment of boxing, old school like it is, you know, he, he kind of got run out of the place saying, now nah, he's nicking the money to fight his mm. monies and that sort of stuff. So he stopped doing it after a few years. And then... Uh, and then I got a, a letter to say I'm getting like 100 grand from a pension. I'm like, what the so I messaged you to mm. say, tell your dad, thanks. I'd forgotten all about it. Mm. And so I thought, can you imagine all those fighters? Because it's, it's great watching the fighters and watching what they do, putting themselves through a hell fire when they're actually fighting. But when they finish, nobody cares. So some of them are skint, some of them are homeless and whatever. 
So can you imagine those fighters all of a sudden getting a letter saying, oh, by the way, you've got X amount of money from a pension you put into that you completely forgot about. And I thought, I thought about me and I thought about fighters that I know are on their arse. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know what, why don't you do that again? And I, I saw you down in Saudi, I said to him, why don't you do it again? He said, you know what, it was too many people against it rather than for it. No brainer, absolute wow. no brainer. Mm -hmm. But he was the only one. But he's a that, yeah, he's a chartered accountant, yeah. my dad. So he's a, he's a numerical genius. Right. right, and everything with him is built on like one of the reasons that he's been so successful is because he's a chartered accountant, he's an outstanding financial guy who who knows numbers like the back of his hand, and he's also an outstanding salesman. Yeah, mm -hmm. right, and that is very unique in business. I'm an outstanding salesman. I'm actually better than him. But, <laughs> but my brain, you know, my, my brain in terms of mathematics and accounts, couldn't I couldn't lace his boots. Yeah, yeah. But that's the foundation of our business. And that's why over the test of time, you see people come and go all the time in boxing, right? Someone's got money, someone's got some investors, someone's got, and it's just like, he'll say to me, oh, someone's up, and, you know, and he'll look at it all and he'll just go, just keep doing your thing. Keep working hard because the cream will rise to the top. And that's the same with anything in life. If you keep doing the right thing, <clears throat> And you keep making good decisions and you keep working hard, it will come. And and over the test of time. But really, he's also a little bit of a softy. Like some of his, you know, best friends in boxing or some of his greatest experiences has been seeing people do well. Yeah. You know, and he, he loves to see people do well. But he's a very different person now than he was at fault. You know, when he was my age, he was promoting Chris Eubank. And he was right in the in the in the heart of boxing. And I would sit, I would get home, fair play to him. He would come home if he was in the country and he was away a lot, as I am, as a father. And he would come in and he would straight away play with me for an hour, two hours, be in a garden, playing cricket, football, whatever. And then straight to the study. And I would sit in the study and just, because I just wanted to be around my dad. And he would be on the phone. And it's the people, the funny thing is, it's, it's all the names sometimes that I'm still arguing with now, you know, so... It might be Frank Warren, Johnny Wish would be phoning up, Pepe Forbes, you remember him? And, <clears throat> and you know, all the people that run the governing bodies now or their parents or who have, have, have A lot moved of on or died. Isn't and so I'm like, you know, I'm sitting there at 12 years old and it's him saying, oh, fucking, you know, I'm telling you now, fuck a <laughs> You know, phone down. Now, you'd never, I've not seen him lose his temper in since he left boxing. Yeah, <laughs> Do yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And, and it's a shit business. And he, he'll come in the office sometimes and he'll go, you know, he'll walk in, he'll go, all right, how you doing? Everything all right? And I'm like, 400 problems. And he goes, so happy I'm not in boxing anymore. <laughs> See you later, son. You know, and just off, because he works in darts. He which nothing, is, so he has nothing to do with the tournament. Nothing, I'll, I'll no, give you a bit of advice. No, no, nothing. I mean, the, he has a passion for boxing. So he'll phone, the worst thing is when he phones me up Sunday morning at nine o'clock. Good show last night. It goes through the whole card. Right? <laughs> what do you think of that boy? That young kid, he's good, isn't he? Yeah. And you're like, Three hours sleep, driving back down the M1, thinking, just, I don't want to talk to anyone today. Yeah, yeah. You know, and he's like, and what do you think about that main event? He's useless, that bloke. Fucking no. <laughs> he's got no bollocks at all, has he? <laughs> oh, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, all right, Dad, okay, I'll catch you later. You know, so, but he, he, I will use him at times, much less now as he's, as he's, as he's got older, but always for advice. Like, you, you know, he's, he's been there and he's, he's done it and he's seen it all, but That's pretty amazing. much on, I, I lean on, he's a great, when you've got a problem, He's a great person to go to. And, yeah. and you know, the, the Connor Ben stuff was a good example where the heat's on and it's fucking brutal. And he'll just go, listen, you know, you did the right thing. You did this, you did that. You, if you front it up, you say this, mm. and tomorrow it'll be fish and chip paper. And every day it'll get easier. You know, all right? See you later. I'm going fishing. <laughs> and you go, oh, thanks a lot. You know, but that you, without him, I obviously wouldn't be where I am. But he's... You know, he's he's very very good in ver in a, in a number of situations about it just and it comes through experience. I've got to say, I can understand now how you've turned out the way you have. Um, <laughs> obviously, with your home life and the way your dad's raised you, not letting you win, doing all that sort of stuff, making sure you got a competitive edge, and obviously from such a young age being around boxing as well. And I know you've said before it's a sport like no other. So you're in there at a young age seeing these people fight. You know, it is life and death in the ring sometimes. You know, it, it takes a hell of a lot to fight. Um, you've probably seen wins, losses, and all the emotions that go with it. So, did you do you think a bit of your competitive edge? I know a lot of it come from your dad, but did you learn a lot of your sort of 
mental strength and stuff from watching these fighters and watch what they go through and watching their training because you to, to have a front row seat to all of those shows and all those huge names and you probably saw what they went through emotionally with their wins and losses did you learn a lot from I that think, as well, well as you probably did? subconsciously mm. i mean you know the other thing for me was growing up no one really knew my name mm. i was just barry's boy you know and i loved it i mean i couldn't tell people quick enough you know if i went to a show I'll be, do you know Barry the promo that's my dad that's my dad you know and but as you start getting a bit older and you want success in your own way and, and I speak to a lot of people you know on, on the stuff like podcasts Frank Lampard was a good example who was a year above me at school we all kind of say the same thing Chris Eubank Junior Connor Ben mm. like it's amazing having a successful father but it's very difficult to actually yeah, achieve something say. in your own name and that's really people talk about the struggle of growing up we can't tell the story about how you know, like my dad can tell the story about, you know, I came from a council estate with nothing and, you know, I had two rooms and used to share it with his sister and, blah, you know, but the the only struggle for me, and it's not as big a struggle as that, is actually trying to outperform a successful father. Mm -hmm. It's very, very difficult to do, but the, that's the drive. And when you go back to the, this is why sport's so important because it became a sport for me. Everything's a sport. Now he'll go to me, seeing the viewing figures on the darts. And I'll go like, and, and darts outperforms boxing by four or five times on Sky. It's unbelievable. Does right? it? Yeah, Do you believe like, that? over a million. That's a fanatical what? for for <laughs> the, the World Championship darts final from the quarterfinals, semifinals, like, over well over a million audience. Just you know, and it. it but he'll say to me, "How'd darts. you get on? You're boxing, you're boxing figures." <laughs> and that's that's it. And we're in the same company. You know, how much money did you make on that show at the weekend? Yeah, do you know how much the darts made, or do you know how much the <laughs> snooker made in China? And it, but but I know it's weird, but that and, and that's the same thing. Right, guys, another massive shout out to one of our sponsors. Now I know if you're a boxing fan, you have definitely seen Wow Hydrate knocking around. These guys do an incredible range of health drinks uh, to prop up your sporting ventures. You have the electrolyte mix in multiple different flavors to help with rehydration, and also your protein mix, which contains collagen, which will help for recovery. Now listen. If the likes of Tyson Fury is drinking these things, then it must be a pretty good drink. But don't take it from Tyson. Take it from me. Go down into the description, click wowhydrate.com and check them out and buy some for yourself. Keep going with that training with Wow Hydrate. And thanks so much to Wow Hydrate for sponsoring this podcast. Would you never s tempted to participate to box? Oh, you, yeah, you, like I had, you, you, you showed two, two sides of it. You've seen fighters, you've seen them go through it, you've seen, you've, you've got closer fighters, you understand the hardships, the, 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 the success and the failures. You've seen the success of your dad and, and, and the good times and bad times. Have you never thought, I might have a go at that, Dad? Yeah, I had like four gym bouts at Billericay Boxing Club, right? And going, the greatest thing about what I experienced in the Amateur Boxing Club was not just having those bouts, but what one of the reasons I push so hard now so you got to remember i'm going down the gym and i'm going on planes and i'm sitting in the changing room with johnny and naz and eubank and you know bruno and lennox I, I, so as a 13 14 year old i think i'm just sure. afraid. i'm thinking no but not just that i'm thinking i can fight yeah right and yeah, i can fight and say, i'll hit yeah. the bag and i was like i actually you know i wasn't good but i was uh, okay right so I would go in there, and then I went to Billericay Boxing Club. Now Billericay Amateur Boxing Club, they're all they're all fairly rough boxing clubs, but Billericay not as rough as Newham or Repton or you know other places. But the people in there were a lot different to the people that I would hang around with at school. Mm. One of again my biggest attributes is my ability to slot in anywhere because of the people that I've grown up with. Right, mm. so now. Although I've come from money, I can sit with a fighter that's come from nothing, or I can sit in a boardroom with a hedge fund. Yeah. Because yeah. I've, you know, you have to understand the, the people in chameleon. boxing. Yeah. So, but really, going back to the boxing, I went into Billericay Amateur Boxing Club and I had four gym bouts, skills bouts, they're called, before you get carded. And they were the best experiences of my life. Like the first one was in Dagnum, right? Where there was like carpet tiles as rings, and it was, I mean, this was a p palatial ring compared to the one that we were in. <laughs> and I went down there, and it was uh, my dad and Jim McDonald, who was like one of my heroes mm -hmm. growing up. And I went in there, and they announced me, and they said, and in the blue corner from Billericay, Eddie Hills. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, 
Oh, I can't believe it. That was my big moment. And the day before, I've been down Charlie Magri's, right, on Bethnal Green Road. I bought the blue, that was our colour, a blue title shorts, you know, with the, with the Lonsdale boots. I had all the gear and everything. Did all right. Like, you know, th those, those fights are so scrappy. Mm. And anyway, when I finished, I thought, I can't believe it. You know, Eddie Hills. <laughs> a couple of weeks later, we had a home show at Billy Ricky. And I went down, this is quite a funny story. And they weigh everybody when you get there and they're just matching him up, right? He's going to fight him. So I weigh in. I was like really tall, but skinny at the time, but it was quite, quite a big lad for 13 or whatever I was. Anyway, this other kid, we were fighting Newham ABC, which is a rough, rough club compared to Billericke, right? So they go, you're fighting that guy over there. Well, this guy was about half my height, three times as wide with like a base and haircut, right? <sighs> so I've gone over to my dad and I've gone, wait. I've got the cat kid over there. You won't believe yeah. it, right? Oh, he battered me, right? But I was holding on for dear life. He was just swinging them in, swinging them in. And then I'd like a couple more after that and then just, just stopped after that. But I did an interview with Coogan because no one thinks I've ever fought, right? So they're all like, he's made it up. He's, and I never had real amateur bouts, but, you know, Francis was there. Jim McDonald was there. So luckily I got a few witnesses, yeah, right? That's good to say, so, yeah. But then I did an interview with Coogan and I told him the story about Francis, right? And all of a sudden, Francis has DM'd Coogan. And there's actually a Zoom interview with me and Francis talking about the fight and the, you know, the occasion and the experience. And, and I, I'm involved a lot with Brentwood Amateur Boxing Club. And I went the weekend, they had a home show. My mm. daughter boxes down there as well. She hasn't had any, sk yeah, she hasn't had any skills bouts yet, but she's, she may. She may have a skill. Are you all right with that? How does it I'm all right. I mean, feel? you know, uh, her mum's not, you know, oh, and she's really? like, yeah, yeah. She's like, I'm not having her punched in the face. But like, <laughs> for me, I always feel that if you, you know, there was two female bouts mm. and like, that was probably the best fights of the whole day. And I'm like looking at it thinking, just the world's changed now. Do you yeah. know, and, and if she wanted to do it, I would never push her into it. But for me, what, the reason I take her is because I go in there I and mean, I love going in there anyway mm. because it actually, it's like a cleansing process when you go to amateur boxing clubs, right? You you work in this horrible world of professional boxing, which is just, it, it can soul it's destroy about, you. About, yeah, yeah, it about, is, yeah, it is. And then you go down there and you go, this is why I love this sport, right? And my daughter goes in and I watch her run around for an hour, hit pads, dripping with sweat, you know, and I'm just smiling the whole time watching her. She comes out, oh, got any water, Dad? Yeah, yeah. Get in the car, and her, her whole attitude has changed. You know, on the way down the gym, she was moody. You know, she's on TikTok, whatever. I will get that phone off her, and I just think, you know, all right, man, amount of times I nearly snap these phones, like, you know, and I just see what you should be doing and what you can Do learn. Do you think she'll follow in your footsteps? I don't want like. I know you don't There's, want it to. Maybe yeah, your dad I, I didn't want, want you yeah, to. Yeah, he did. No, I was. I had to. Okay. Right. I was. I was like really educated to do so. Like I think as a you know, and and I think it's the world has changed in terms of sons and daughters. And I can't lie. If I did have a son, I you know I have two daughters. I probably would what? think about you know the but there's no reason why a female can't do it at the same time. You're just softer yeah, as a, yeah, as a yeah. father on you know you got daughters as well. And it's like all I want them to do is be happy. But all I want them to do is find a passion. You know, if they turn mm. around today and said, you know what, I've watched you, I've watched Grandad, and I want to keep this, guy. you know, I, I, this this is our life, isn't it, Matrim? And it is. Like, we'll sit down on a Sunday lunch, all we talk about is business. And my mum's going, will you stop? You know, <laughs> wow, stop, stop. But that's, that is completely our life, the, the company. <laughs> so as a kid, she's sitting there, and like I did, and it's just feeding in and maybe she turns around but it's the, for me I don't want her to have that kind of pressure mm -hmm. you know because I put a lot of pressure on myself that it's like a responsibility and it's very difficult when you you know you have employees and that's where we go to people like Frank Smith how can you create an environment in your organisation that makes people give the same commitment that you give when it's not their business mm -hmm. when they don't have the bloodline when they don't have the responsibilities how, how when do they, you? You, you give them a great environment to work in. You give them the opportunity to move through the business, to achieve. You give them freedom of reign to go out and, and, and you know, literally be free and express what they can do. Um, but it's down to the individual as well. Mm. You know, 
to be successful without the leg up that I had, you have to make sacrifices in a different kind of way. And, and Frank's sacrifice was he didn't have any mates, really, because he chose not Education. to because he was so yeah. focused on. Listen, the life he's had at 16, 17, he's flying around the world. He's, you know, now he's in. Everybody aware. thought it was a mini version of yeah, you. Yeah, but he, he was. It's a bit project. similar. You know, it's like yeah. not the son that I never had. But I, <laughs> you know, I now, again, a lot of stuff happens unintentionally. You know, when Frank started, I wasn't. Th when Frank started, it was me, Frank Smith, and John Wishhausen. Mm. That was our boxing department. I did the tweeting and created the posters. Frank basically just ran around doing whatever was left, and John Wish would do all the stuff with the board and make the fights. So yeah. how long ago well, was that? That was 13, 14 years wow. ago. And and nice again, but, and now yeah. you're talking what sixty people? You <laughs> yeah, said. Just, just in boxing, you know, yeah. but like Jesus. over a hundred people within the company. But but now Frank's employing different people every day. I see people come, I come in the office, and there's like. Or like, hi, yeah, oh, hi, we're the new videographers and digital team. I'm like, oh, hi, guys, you know. But Frank, you know, without Frank, the, the reason we work so well is, and we joke about it all the time, you're not, Frank, although he's capable and much better, isn't going to get in front of the cameras and hold the stage and yeah, yeah. sell this and sell that. What he's going to do is make sure that the show is incredible. Everything he's done to the absolute letter and and he's he's the best operator in, in the sport, bar none. If bar you none. if you if you didn't do this, what would you do? Yeah, good question. I mean, I think when when I I'm a failed athlete, really. Like any young kid who likes sport would love to play sport, play cricket at a good level. Probably could have turned pro, but would never have made it. Like I was never good enough. So working in sport was the next best thing. Even from a young age, my dad would always say to me, "If you can get one percent." And the adrenaline that a fighter gets mm. when they walk into a ring, you're really lucky. Now I feel like I get 80% yeah, a lot yeah. of the time. But and, and so being around sport, and when I left college, I was going to go to university, but I got a job. I worked in the sports marketplace as a sports agent, and I represented golfers on the PGA Tour. I was flying over there all the time on the European Tour. You know, I was working on marketing events. And I never really thought I'm going to go and work for my dad. But every time I went in for these interviews... Like, you know, Matrim was a much bigger company than the company that I was working for. So, like, you know, the guy would go, can I ask, um, are you related to Barry Hearn? I'm like, yeah, it's my dad. And they're almost like, what are you doing here? <laughs> you you doing know? Here, but I hated yeah. the fact, because growing up, everyone went, you'll be all right. You look at your old man, he's cake. Like, what, what do you have to work for, you know? So I think, what would I have done? I don't know. I, I think, you know, 90% of my friends from school are all working on the stock market, you know, in, in on the financial markets. I can imagine you on the Probably floors. have done that. Probably have done that. Yeah. And that's probably just as stressful as boxing. Maybe even worse. Can I just ask, um, touching back on, you said your daughter's boxing um, and the difference between sons and daughters, because obviously women's boxing's really, really coming through. Um, and I have to admit, I've got two young girls myself. Um, and part of me was like, when I knew I was having kids, part of me was like, oh, if I have a little lad, I can mm. imagine myself on the pads and, then I had daughters, and obviously I'm a massive boxing fan, absolute fanatic. And it is a part of me that's a little bit worried about the idea of my daughters mm. boxing. I'm definitely coming around to it now. But do you think there's a possibility that like that that sort of it, it just initial feeling, um, it, it that there's kind of a, an idea that women fight, like girls fighting, or especially your daughters mm. or your sons fighting. You, you're okay with your sons fighting, your daughters mm. fighting. It feels bad. Do you think that's what sort of stopped? A lot of young girls getting into the sport before now. Or you yeah, think, is because it, think that's something to do with society that's made it a little less. Because if you look at the older generation, they will tell you whether they tell you now or it, whatever. It, yeah. They will say women don't fight. Yeah, well that's women, how I was raised. Women you know don't I mean? fight. They don't go into a boxing mm. ring. And even when you know when Katie Taylor first reached out to me, I wasn't against women's boxing. Mm. I just felt like I just not sure it has a future. Mm. that's how I felt then I met her she kind of motivated me to just uh, and it, at that point it wasn't like oh let's ch let's invigorate women's boxing mm. I was thinking about her mm -hmm. and what I can do for her and how I can be part of this journey rather than women's boxing in general the older promoters my dad mm -hmm. same Frank Warren mm -hmm. same Bob Arum like, they won't they're probably not. I mean, Bob Aaron will admit it because he actually says anything, and he did admit it recently. <laughs> where it's like he just said, "No, not for me." And it took yeah. Fra Frank Warren's got one female fighter. It took him years to sign a female fighter, and I don't. 
I don't mind that because I, I feel like sometimes you shouldn't just do things to tick boxes. Mm -hmm. You should do things because you believe in it. And I think deep down, he believes. Now he's probably watched his female fights going, oh, shoes, it's all right. But that's an old school mentality. For me, being part of an amateur boxing club really isn't the fighting bit. And maybe it's because I have daughters. Is like, I'm not really that bothered mm. about that. I want them to walk through those doors. I want them to put the hard work in. I want them to listen to the coaches. I want them to get off their phone. I want them to be around different so kind of people. So much more they get from And them. I want them to feel like, like on Saturday, when I went Sunday, when I went to his amateur show, I watched a few fights with, with my daughter and then next thing, she's off with the whole sort of team and the kids playing hide and seek around the thing. And like and that that for me is part of it. It's, like, that, it's that social environment. A lot of fighters go to the gym. I went to the gym because that's where my mates were. Mm. My daughters, I'd love if they did that, but they've no, they've no interest in it at all. Mm. My, my middle daughter, an amazing swimmer, I said, India, you could be the first black British you know, Olympian swimming. She went, Dad, I don't want to get my hair wet. Yeah. Oh. I know, I know. But uh, it's frustrating because my older daughter, who's 13, she's at that stage, right? Amazing cricketer, just a great athlete all round. And it's like, there's a hockey tour. You know, this weekend, go to the hockey tour. Trying to get her <laughs> like, Face it, all her mates who are cool, like want to go to the yeah, cinema, yeah. Like, they're not going to the hockey yeah, tour. Yeah, yeah. But it's really, I'm, what I'm learning as a parent is actually, it's, it's the earlier years, the foundations that you build. Like my youngest, she's, she plays football three times a week. She goes boxing. She's, you know, and, and she's young enough for the distractions she having sounds like in. she'll be following your footsteps she find, yeah. sounds like she she she'd do yeah what i just do. want them to be happy you know i just i, I want to, i want them to find something that they have a passion for mm -hmm. and i feel like I, I really worry about this generation mm -hmm. you know and the generations beyond yeah, because definitely. like it's just you know I, 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 we're you know on top of our social media accounts and i look at instagram and twitter like twitter's a cesspit yeah, it's, it's disgusting you know, it I really is you know it, i was looking yeah. at something this morning sunny edwards was tweeting something and i was looking at responses and i was thinking what a country we live in yeah, yeah, yeah. what the what is going on it just yeah. shows what, what people doing? have got I know, going on in here isn't it? i know but it's yeah. like anyway they're reading all that mm. obviously you know they're they're on social media someone said that someone said that so, and it, and it's like sport seems to be one of the few things that can take your mind away from that and yeah, really, I, it's the phone, the I know, phone. I know it, it's worse. Boxing can be a dirty, rotten post mm. prostituting game, but it is best. It's got to be the oh, best amazing. sport in yeah. the world. But that's why I go back to those places, not just because we've done very well out of boxing. I feel like we should give something back. I, From a selfish point of view, I like it. Mm. You know, some people go to me, do you go down here? Do you go down here with your box? What do people say when you walk? Like, I'm in there. Like, I'm just sitting here, you know, and all the fighters are coming in. Could be eight, could be 19. And they're like, but now they see me most weeks. And it's like, what are you doing here? And I like go up to them and go, hey, don't you looking well, mate? When's your next fight? And they're like, <laughs> but I don't sit, you know, I'm not just saying it, I don't see myself like that. You yeah. know, sometimes people say, oh, like, you don't realise, like, there's a couple of kids who, there's a young boy called Anthony Smith who boxed, he's, he's had three fights now and he's lost every one, right? And Johnny will know about that, starting yeah. off the career, right? Yeah. And I've, I've used you in his example, for him and Bernard Hopkins and people like that. And, you know, I first saw him in the gym and he was, you know, very shy kid. And I thought, oh, bet he ain't much cop. Anyway, he trains like so hard, like every day. It's about loving, the, he loves boxing. And I found out he's having his first fight. I thought, oh. anyway, I couldn't make it. He lost. Then a few weeks later, I went to a show and he had his second fight. And I was just, you know, like everything across his social media, like everything is about boxing. You know, his kit, he loves he, it. he's yeah. got his name on his kit. I don't just know what it means to him, you know? Yeah, yeah. And then he had this fight um, and I thought he won, but he lost, right? And, you know, it almost makes me cry when when you see a young kid get out of the ring because you know, like, and it's there's a lot of people there. Mm. It's not like you're just losing in a gym. It's, it's soul destroying for him. Comes out and I'm like, listen, you box great. I thought you won that fight, but you don't really want to know. Just goes back to change room, starts crying, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, keeps at it, keeps at it. Last week, I have a home show, the one on Sunday, and he has a chest infection for two weeks. And his dad's saying, I don't think he's going to fight. Like, he's just not well. Anyway, I turn up, he's like, he's fighting, isn't he? Good look over. They've matched him in with his kid. I, you know, I've looked at him. He's like a slick southpaw, this other kid. Anyway, he's got, mus he's got muscles out here. These kids are like 13, 14. I'm like... Little man. I'm like, I'm praying. I'm thinking, please let him win one. 
oh mate they had an absolute war right i'm standing up the kid's dad is next to me. I'm not even, I don't even know why I'm involved. I'm nearly having a fight with the kid's dad. I'm going, go on, Anthony, straight one, two down a minute. Like, lost, lost my, and don't his dad's you going, tell my it was, to John, his dad was, shut up, he won that. I go, good round, you won that round. I go, all the judges are here. I'm like, you won that round, Anthony. You know, and his dad's going, no, he never won that round. Anyway, like, I thought he won again. He lost. Fuck. Right? <laughs> and it's like, but these little, you know, for me, that's where I get a lot of my enjoyment. So, I know, like, people who can have a positive effect on people, mm. it's a big responsibility. Athletes, fighters, footballers particularly, even social media stars, mm -hmm. once they learn the enjoyment and the responsibility that they have and the ability mm. to change someone's direction in life, that's an unbelievable blessing. You know, and if I can help Anthony Smith win a fight or feel good or get something out of boxing that just changes his direction a little bit or changes his mindset or his confidence to go and do that. Like, and that's where people like Anthony Joshua have so much respect for them because they know that and they give themselves and they give time and they give energy to trying to do that. That's where when you see him like implode after the Usyk fight, that's just like, I can't take it. My whole life, all I've done is try to do good and I get this and I get criticism and, and, and this is like an explosion of that emotion. Mm -hmm. Yes. But like that's a real blessing to be able to go in their gym, and even if it's a self, you know, for self benefit of feeling good, and it does make me feel really good mm -hmm. that I can go down to a kid and say, "Oh, and he can go, oh, I'm at Eddie Hearn tonight. Yeah. Wow, I'm gonna, I'm gonna train even harder. I'm gonna do this, or I'm gonna do that." That, that for me, as you get older, that's really more rewarding than doing a great show, mm -hmm. you know, because I just, I find it quite bizarre in a way that I can have that effect, but people with a much bigger profile than me. They've got to understand that responsibility. And, and is, it, co it costs nothing. It costs it does. nothing. Yeah. It's time. Yeah, I, the I, only I, thing it costs Johnny is time. Yeah, and I can remember I got a job selling umbrellas, one pound a piece, Battersea Clock Tower on the corner. I had a little table there. And a little red escort drove past, and Frank Bruno was, was in there. I was only about six, 15, 16. And he looked at me and waved. And I'm like, he just waved at me like, shit, <laughs> Frank Bruno. And that, and I tell him that. I, I told him years later. But he just made me feel right good. He acknowledged mm. me and thought... I, it doesn't take a lot. Just a little know, yeah. nothing. But, but little things like that make a But now, difference. if you look at, you know, one of the problems when you talk about, you know, um, knives in the community and stuff like that, the problem is, is they have no hope, mm -hmm. right? And the only hope they have, when you talk about... And the reason it's important to get them into a boxing gym is to give them that sense of belonging, right? And, and that they're in... They're part of a family or they're part mm -hmm. of a community. The problem with the whole system is, is it's like problem on problem. So these young kids have no sense of belonging or community or even family, a lot of them. Yeah, that's, that's so, a big one. So being in a gang or being part or running the streets with those guys, that's their belonging. That's their Feels boxing that gap, club, right? That, that, mm. These are my brothers. They, they, mm. they, we're all in it together. Mm -hmm. this is, you know, and it's this sort of brotherhood of this is us against the world and you know what fuck the world because they don't care about us mm -hmm. so we're going to go and do our own thing right when you talk to those kids which I try and do as, as often as I can but again if I was that kid I'd look at me and go what do you tell me you got money you had a rich dad like what you can't and, and that's that's true that's why I don't do a lot of them because I don't feel right mm. trying to yeah I can talk about mindset and stuff like that but the reality is I've not been there I don't know what it's like, you know, I, I, I've been very lucky. But the problem is with these kids is, what's, sh all right, okay, show me the opportunity. Right, it's all very well saying, keep working hard and the opportunity will come. Will it? Well, who fucking cares about me? This is what they're yeah, thinking, yeah, yeah. right? So yeah. they're, they're looking at it and going, so, you know, and they're on Instagram and he's got, Andrew Tate's got four Bugattis, yeah. you know, and so-and-so's got a Louis Vuitton bag that's 1,500 quid and I want those Jordan trainers and they're 400 quid. And you're telling me that I can do an apprenticeship for two years for 70 quid a week. And then at the end of it, if I'm lucky, I might get a job on 15 grand a year. Mm. Or I can run some drugs down there for 500 quid in cash right mm. now. You know? That's really and I could be point. with my friends. Like that. And, and I don't blame them. Right? The system is like, it's so broken. The country's in a terrible state. Mm. Terrible state. And everyone always tries to paper over the cracks, don't they? Yeah, it's all right. It's not really. I, yeah, I, look, but, I look at what you've done with Frank Smith. Uh, and, and and coming through, I don't know his background, but 
but I know one thing that, that he, I don't know what qualifications he had to start working no, for you. Really? But looking at where he is now, to me, we're, we're doing this, and anybody watching this, they'll think, you know what? It's not about just being in the ring. What about business outside the ring? Some people are in front of the camera. What about? The, I want people to think about being behind the camera. So it's just giving a different aspect to how success doesn't have to be just in boxing. The sex can be success can be, can be the business of boxing, mm -hmm. inspiring people to work behind the scenes because one doesn't work without the other. Mm. And so I think seeing that, I think this is th this is important. It's about having yeah. hope, isn't it? I think, and I just, I, I just, I can't imagine what these kids must be. Thinking. You know, I was on a train recently, and there was like eight kids. It was only me in the carriage, and they were down there. They're probably like 14, 15, and they're all mucking around. They were like half a school uniform on, and they looked up at me, and I, and they sort of walked out. I thought, oh, here we go, you know. And but they spotted me, and they're like, you know. Oh, you AJ's promoter? And I'm like, yeah, yeah. So I was like, what are you boys doing? It was like two o'clock in the afternoon. Oh, we're at this thing. Like we got kicked out of school. And so we're at this like detention center. And basically we go there for like two hours a day and they just stick us in a room and we just fuck about really. So we're just like, and I said to him, what are you going to do? And they're like, what do you mean? I said, well, if you carry on like that, what, yeah. what, what are you going to end up doing? He went, I don't know. I'm like, who gives a fuck? Like no one cares about us. That's mm. what he said. And that stuck with me. You know, no one cares about us. And that's that's the reality is there's too many there's too many problems. It's like and I'm not saying it's not fixable, but the the problem has to come at the, at the mm -hmm. ground level. And the stuff with boxing in the community is a great example of, and it, it can a million percent change people's lives, and a lot of them. But there's still got to be this hope, this vision of someone. I just think it's so difficult to say to someone with nothing, right? Just keep working hard. It'll come. Find a passion for something. Chase your dream. That's all the things you should be saying. But the reality is, is if you're smart and if you look at life and statistics and all that kind of stuff, you'd be thinking to yourself, will it? Yeah. You know, how long, how long will it or take? They might not know somebody, they might not know, but it's somebody that's been that successful. Yeah. You're they might not know anybody personally. So they're thinking, why should I have to mm. me? This is a problem. And how long will it take? Like a lie. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm, how yeah, long yeah. will it take? Because yeah, I want yeah. a car. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Because my yeah. mate's got down there, he's, he's just bought a new BMW. Like, you know, he's, he's 18, 19, he's got a BMW. Can I get a BMW if I do this? Yeah, if yeah. I work hard, if I chase my dream, if I chase my passion, how much money does that make? Like, they, they, you know, and again, it's all a build up of social media, yeah. of infiltration of this stuff. Like, you know, and, and <laughs> again, we're going well off a tangent here, but when you talk about Andrew Tate, right, and people like that. That's madness. That. I went to the school recently and I was talking to a teacher and they said, we've got a major problem at the moment where kids who are 14, 15, 16 are watching Andrew Tate mm -hmm. religiously, right? Andrew Tate is saying, be a man, stand up. Don't listen to people who are trying to control your mind, right? People with who haven't achieved anything themselves, right? Free your mind out of this matrix that he calls it, right? And the kids think Andrew Tate is, is a, a superhero, yeah, it's right? It's fucking insane. And that. The te they're going to the teachers, literally, who the fuck are you? Yeah. And basically, Andrew Tate's telling me that people like you, you lived in the system and you let it control you. I'm fucking beyond that. Mate, honestly, it's... But, but, it, but the other thing is, that it's got to start at, at, at the education part. The education part is, what do they teach you in schools? Do they teach you life? They'll teach you maths, they'll te mm. teach you history, they'll teach you everything else, but just, just life skills can be a lesson for, for preparing you for... I, I couldn't ask. agree more. And I went to a parents' evening recently I don't want to get in trouble because in case the teacher <laughs> did. But the teacher from Design and Technology, who was a brilliant guy, like really, you know, I could tell that he, and he was like, this is what we're doing at the moment. And he brought out this box and it was a pencil case, right? And he was going, we're, we're building this and we're putting a design on the top of it. And I'm like, why? <laughs> how far behind are we? Like yeah. my daughter's never going to make a box in her life <laughs> it's always <laughs> but it's like it, things take time don't they yeah, you know? yeah and he's talking about and i know it's important to educate about history yeah. and stuff like that but I, I there's other things that i would prefer my daughter to be learning about than napoleon yeah right and I, and it's great to have a broad knowledge of of all things but at the same time i think the education system has to change because it's not relevant to the problems that are being faced within society, particularly digital society and social media. Making a pencil box is not going to help you in the world that you're <laughs> going to end up living in. Yep.
Yeah, it's true. You've got to think as well, these kids are going to school, and like you said, the, the education system's always a bit behind. They're not really learning things. I even remember when I was in school, before all social media and everything, you think, oh, I'm not going to learn anything I can actually use in the real world. Well, you think that when you leave school. But they, they go to school for like eight hours a day, then they go home, and you, you can almost argue they're getting more education off of social media than they are, right, yeah, than they yeah, are yeah. in school. Well, we because are, one, they don't really respect the teachers. Um, a, a lot of the time, unfortunately, mm. and obviously with your attitude as a, as a youngster, you don't really want to listen to your elders and that. It's not cool. So you're going home and all this stuff they're soaking up on their phone is genuinely, it's genuinely affecting them probably more than, the, than, than the teachers to- are. Totally and then with, yeah, and then with Andrew Tate, for example, the guy has now been arrested on these charges. People are in comment section and they apparently know he's innocent. <laughs> they know he's free. They, they believe yeah, yeah, yeah. it that that wholeheartedly. The, and but that's the problem with social media. We we will take a snippet of information for gospel, but if somebody, even an expert nowadays, we don't listen to experts anymore. Like somebody can have all of the like, what do you call them in front Stats, of their names, doctors the, yeah. and blah, 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 PhD and all that. We won't listen to them because you've seen a thirty second fucking reel that apparently debunks the whole world. Mm. And 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 this is what kids are genuinely soaking up. So. No, I mean, I didn't even think about it, it, it from that context of how much that must be making uh, this more of a problem. But you've got these kids, like you've said, you can't put yourself in their shoes. They haven't got anyone that cares about them. They, then obviously they're going to join gangs to get that family sort of feeling. They're getting half their education off this fucking bullshit platform that now yeah. has taken over the world. People on there that are poison. So you put all of that together. Disaster. It's like it is a disaster yeah. and it's scary to even the, think but, about But the reason that the, the people of our age or people beyond that we sound like grumpy old ended men, didn't up we? okay was because yeah. of the simplicity of life. Mm. Right? I mean I I come from no phones. Mm. I can't even remember. Like I, I look at my kids now having, when we're out for dinner or whatever and I just think, what did we do? Like what well, what we did was we played a puzzle or we played I Spy or we played... Actually, or, or spent time during together. the dinner when we were waiting for the food, yeah. my old man would take me somewhere and go, oh, I'm fucking run around that lake. Go on, yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, or whatever, like anything to try... skim stones yeah. or... Yeah. I spoke to my youngest one about... Egg houses. I spoke to my youngest one and said, do you know what signing on is? She said, yeah, when you sign into a computer. <laughs> what? <laughs> no idea. They've that mm. sort of, But yeah, that, that's the situation. But it's a case of trying to doing things like this to educate them a, a different way than the, the than the educational system. It's got to come early. Yeah. Oh, that's what I've found as a parent. Like once you get 13, 14, 15, it's tough to change the direction because Definitely. you're so influenced by the company you keep. And even more so now, if you don't get in there before the 13, 14 and make a real impact, then like we've said, we've, we're going against social media mm. then. Have your girls got social media? Have they? Yeah. Like, so what's, what's your outlook on I'm that? I'm like, because I mean, they're they're sort of moni- moni- <laughs> monitored on monitored. How old are your daughters? I've only two and eight. Oh, months. Oh, you got a long way yeah, to go. Yeah. Two and eight <laughs> long months. Way, Jesus, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. No, um, the biggest challenge for me is definitely being a parent. Like, yeah. I, I think, uh, and because I'm away so much as well, but my 13 year old, that's the that's the age I'm scared of. I mean, I <laughs> you know this morning, right, or you know. I've gone to my, to my youngest this morning. She's, but what happens is the older one kind of distances yourself. So you end up being more drawn to the other one because the other one, the 13 year old won't even talk to you. Yeah. You know, I mean, you've been through it, Johnny. Your, yeah, your yeah. girls have sort of spread the, their wings now and gone. But like mine, my 13 year old, like I said, like the other morning, I'm like, right, um, are you ready for school? What? Come on, we've got to go. <sighs> And I go in, open the door, get out, get out. I'm like, oh, 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 oh. you know, I'm getting choked. What's the matter with you? I'm like, oh, oh. you know, it's like, but I know that that's, that mood has probably come from TikTok or, yeah. or, or an argument on phone. So she's on, like, she's got a private TikTok account. But the, the worst thing is like the group chats, they're all, the whole class mm-hmm. is on group chat all night. Oh, they're on all night. Someone's going to say something that's going to upset you, put yeah, you yeah. in a negative frame of mind. Yeah. Next thing you wake up, you got the hump the next day. Obviously, she's a teenager, so she's going through like the teenage years, which is like it is like Kevin and Perry. Remember the <laughs> oh, thank you, Miss Person. Oh, thank <laughs> you, Jim Sandwich. Yeah, no, but, but the worst <laughs> thing is, if I drop her to a friend's house, right? I pick her up and they go, "Can I just say, Isabella? Wow, what an angel!" <laughs> and I'm like. I'm sorry. You know, it's like, <laughs> but so that's, and actually for me, that's the most important thing. Like the only thing I want her to have is manners, mm-hmm. you know, respect, good heart. discipline and hard work and a good heart. Be, you know, every time, I, if I drop her off at school, 
I say have a good day. Be kind. Work hard. And that's it. But it's it's challenging. I mean, you wait. I mean, two and like two months, like, mate, enjoy it. Wow. I must it's say, like, I'm absolutely right. loving have, it. Especially the eight-month-year-old. You know, yeah, you wake up. Don't you, you want a boy? Just sits there and smiles. Don't you yeah. want a boy? You got, you got I've heard real men have girls. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I, yeah, I, that's I, right. I, tried, I tried to convince myself of that as well. <laughs> that's right. That's right. We do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You haven't got boys, have you? Three girls. I know. Three two. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there you go. Look, we should do a new podcast. <laughs> three, men and, three men and lots of ladies. Hello, everyone. So, for those of you that may have noticed how good myself and Johnny have been looking throughout this podcast, that's because we are donning real. Now, they produce high-performance sportswear inspired by boxers. Boxing is as much mental as it is physical, and real believe that it's a combination of physical and mental strength. That is where your performance potential lies. Unify body and mind to realize the power of one. Real fights for enhanced mental well-being. So whether you're a seasoned boxer or new to the sport, Real will empower you to test your limits. You can find them on Facebook and Instagram at Real Power of One, and you can find their store and their newsletter over on realpowerofone.com. And take it from me, this genuinely is some of the most comfortable and high-quality sportswear that I have ever worn. So it's realpowerofone.com for sportswear inspired by boxers. And thank you so much to Real for sponsoring this podcast. Um, yeah, so look, I guess it, w- with all that in mind, um, Eddie, taking it back to boxing, um, what what would you say the key things that getting into a boxing gym, an amateur gym, for for anyone out there that may be lacking direction or or maybe listening to this and um, and may know somebody that could, that could get something from the sport, what what would walking through the doors of an amateur gym present to these people? I think you have to look at people that have done it. And, mm-hmm. and case studies like there's nothing better than a role model or an ambassador to say this is what it did for me mm-hmm. right so the best per you know the best ones are the people who've been in a position where they needed direction and they needed um that kind of structure in their life and and for me in that case i mean johnny's a great example as well but in terms of profile, that's why AJ is so powerful because he went to Finch the Amateur Boxing Club not to be world heavyweight champion. Basically, he was involved with gangs. He got arrested. He was going to basically was going to end up in prison or dead. And someone went to him, you should go down Finchley Boxing Club. And he went down there and he started lifting weights. I think he was lifting weights because he thought, I'm going to end up probably in prison. Here, yeah, so I want to yeah. make sure I can look after <laughs> him. Some and probably around. that's why he went to Finchley Boxing Club. And as soon as he walked in, he met Sean Murphy. Every, you know, I find that in all sports now, all kids' sports, the most amazing people are the volunteers, right? And when you look at those people, and and Brendan Ingle, probably the greatest example, and again, when you talk about what we said earlier, about that feeling of changing someone's life or direction is more rewarding than any deal or any show or any million, millions, really. Mm -hmm. And they end up dedicating their life to doing that and I look at the coaches in the boxing I can't believe Johnny they're there yeah. every night and I'm like and and even the the coaches who coaches my daughter's football team right I'm watching them and then the, sometimes and they're, they're getting better now but they were terrible right and they were like losing 14 <laughs> nil and stuff like that Barry right? coming yeah, out, right? but they were losing like 14 nil and I was looking at this coach thinking you're back again like, every like three times a week and at the weekend like how selfless is that to give mm-hmm. that up? And you meet people in those environments that can just change your life. And and for Johnny it was it was Brendan, for for AJ it was probably Sean Murphy, mm-hmm. and Johnny Oliver. Yeah, you know, we just put an arm around him and went, "You're good, you are, son. Keep going. Well done tonight. You coming next week? You and coming? Think, you coming Wednesday?" And I think uh, in every area, see AJ's story in his in, in his area, people people but they know the story is real. It's not just some PR. Mm-hmm. Gone, if they know it's real, so they think if he can do it, I can do that. My area is the same. So each area you've got, you've got people that have just got out of, got been in trouble, got out of it, done something with themselves, and you just need that little bit of inspiration that you can relate to, mm-hmm. to think. I want to, Mark Mark Prince, great example, mm-hmm. great example. That guy's life, how, how he's turned it around, what he's done yep. in the community, unbelievable. I think we should get him on here, be yeah, a great yeah. one as well. But I think it's 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 somebody like that that can actually speak that language. Yeah, and he's and he's fortunate because most of the people he grew up with, like Herbie Hard mm. and people like he, he, you were brought up around those people, mm. so it's second nature to you to sit around these people and think, I get it, I get where you're coming from. 
So that that's probably why you're probably a little more fortunate than than most that were born in your mm-hmm. position because you actually understand the struggles. You actually can speak the language and you know what's mm-hmm. going on. But most of the time, the kids have got to find somebody to relate to. I, they, I, they, I think that when you say about why should they go down, I think the way society has changed brings another dimension to why they should go down. Basically, the old school mentality of why a kid should go into a boxing club is to teach them some hard work yeah. and, and respect discipline. And, and, and discipline, right? Yeah. Which it does better than anything. Yeah, it does. But yeah. now I look at it on another level of, of physical, mental well-being yeah. and just getting out of this, you know, main, mainly this this device this, in your head. Yeah, 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 yeah and, exactly. just, and just doing normal stuff. Mm-hmm. Right? And, th- and, and that is, like I say, I witness it firsthand. And it's not just, my passion is boxing. So I always beat the drum for what boxing can do in the community. Mm. But now having taken them to football clubs and hockey, it's all sport, right? But boxing's different, mm. what, what it can teach you. But I just feel like if you're lacking a little bit of direction, you know, being fit, I think whatever you do, even like this, you know, about a year ago, I sort of said to myself, we were saying like, I just, I thought, you could have, you know, my old man had a heart attack at 50 or whatever it was. He's still going at 73. He's had two now, but he's still still good. His dad died at 44 from a heart Jesus. attack. His dad died at 45 from a heart attack. And I'm like out on a plane every week, Jesus. stuff in my Sitting face, like there. trying to run. And I think yeah. it's like, I'm looking at pictures of myself, like my face is like this. And I'm thinking, mate, you're only going one way. <laughs> so it's like, and then, and then everything's like a positive snowball effect. So the better you're eating, the more you're training, the better you feel. Mm-hmm. The better you feel, the harder you can work. The harder mm-hmm. you work, the better you do. You know what I mean? So it's like, so for me, being fitter and and doing more exercise is actually a key to feeling good, longevity, you know, sustainability, having the capacity in the engine to work. Because that's really why I did it. In the end, I was like, I've got a big contract here with, with, you know, and I need, I'm going to work myself to the bone. Yeah. And to do that, if you work yourself to the bone and you ain't sleeping, Mm -hmm. you're not eating right, or you're not training, only goes one way. So, and that's the same with them in life. So if mm-hmm. you're struggling, if you're struggling for a little bit of direction, the first thing that it comes from is feeling good about yourself and positive about yourself. Because if you're moping around, if you've got no energy, if you've got no direction, <clears throat> if you've got no positivity in your life, there may not be a way out. And that's, yeah, what, bo- that's I, what boxing gives you. No yeah, matter what, I, I think, think without a doubt. I think there's a key thing there, there as well. I hear, a lo- we hear a lot about the mental health talk. Like we said earlier, your dad's got the old school view on it. And the, the, it, nowadays mental health and social media definitely there's a connection there but i think what's not spoken about enough is mental health and fitness um definitely have such a strong connection because it it is absolute scientific fact that obviously when you exercise it releases endorphins it makes you feel better like you're saying you feel better and you can work better and you're firing on all cylinders when you're fit and when you're healthy and you feel happy so I think a lot of the, the the connection really needs to be with a lot of these kids and a lot of people that are, are, are struggling from mental health. Have a look at how active you actually are. If you're st- sat looking at your phone a lot and you're not getting exercise, one, the phone's going to be affecting your mental health, but two, movement. Movement genuinely, if you're, if you're physically healthy, you will have that connection. You will be mentally healthy. And I think that's such, such an important thing. And one of the biggest things, not only boxing, but all sports can do, will get you physically healthy, which will in turn make you mentally healthy. And that can really, really change your life. And all the discipline and everything that comes along with it as well. From I, th- from I think you sport. are, I mean, what one thing I've learned a lot is you are what you consume. Yeah. Really. I used to listen exactly. to that quote and think, well, like, you know, I've got, I mean, I'm, I, I post a lot of quotes now. Someone said to me the other <laughs> day, I'm posting a lot of quotes lately. Like, right? But I, re- I do read things right? now. Yeah, and go, do yeah, the selfie yeah. and then write the quote. I've, yeah. I've had that where I've actually posted something and someone's gone. And that, by the way, that's good. Like During the Conor Ben thing, no joke, Like a lot of people were reaching out to me going, yeah. just checking in on you. And I was yeah. like, yeah. I'm fine, but thank you. That's quite nice, really. Like, mm-hmm. you know, there's a lot. And, 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 and But that stuff about like reading quotes, but you are what you consume, mm-hmm. right? So if you're consuming negativity, like mm-hmm. around that, Connor situation I read everything and I'm on social media much too much but it's kind of like my job and I want to be on the pulse and I want to always be one step ahead and when you're reading like abuse and like just negative like all day it can only make you feel like as tough mm-hmm. as you are and as mm-hmm. thick as your skin is and all that kind of stuff it can push you in a bad mood mm-hmm. right and that's what but when you don't read it you don't even know it's there I said to Connor Connor when it all went off Connor said I'm 
I'm going to come off social media. I thought, that's a good idea. Very good anyway, idea. And for how bad I was getting it, he was, I mean, imagine being him, right? right? So, and no one cares. No one feels sorry for him or whatever. But then, about a week later, I phoned him out and I said, hey, feeling? He went, yeah, I'm all right, actually. Yeah, good. He said, I haven't, I haven't been on social media. How's it been? <laughs> and I was like, oh. <laughs> good luck. But, but that's a great example, yeah, yeah. Good luck. right? You imagine waking up, going to the gym, training, coming back, seeing your little boy, having a bit of bite to eat, go back to the gym, being around those positive people you're just getting in that on environment. With life. You're just getting mm, on right? with life. That don't even exist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can't. Why do we put ourselves in a position? And I'm the, I'm the, I'm at fault more than anyone of accepting criticism. Do you accept? Do you take it personally? Yeah. Do you? Yeah. I think. I think every, yeah, but I do. Like, but I'm, yeah. but you know what? With me, I'm strong enough to take it. Right. But still, your tolerance levels. Everyone's got different tolerance yeah. levels. Right. Some people's are down here. Mine's fucking up here. But when the shit hits the fan, mm. it comes at you, yeah, right? Yeah. And it will just get to a little level where it'll start, you know, And but normally I'm just the same. I can't fuck. But then I start thinking to myself, why are you even? Like, and when you talk about you are what you consume, it doesn't matter how much you say, I don't care, whatever. If someone <clears throat> writes to you or personally DMs you and says, I don't know, you're a scumbag, mate. Do you know what? I've been looking at you and you're, you know, they might have a pop at you. They might say something racist to you or whatever. The ability for someone that you don't know, you know, you're a world champion, right? What you've achieved in your life is unbelievable. You just become an MBE. Mm. Yet some geezer who literally has never done a day's work in his life, who has zero ambition, has the opportunity and the ability to comment on something you say or DM you, right? And affect or maybe not affect how you feel. And when it gets to a point where it's okay if someone says, oh, bloody hell, Eddie. AJ's not all that. You're, you know, that was a shit show you did last night. No problem. But when it's like, you know, by the way, you know, you're you're this and your your dad's this yeah, and personal. you're a scumbag and you don't care about boxing, you're a con man, and it's like, oh, you're laughing at it. And then it's like, and then when when again that shit hits the fan, it's like, and there's there's a thousand of them. Mm. And you just go. <laughs> <laughs> I I always say, if but you I don't, don't even. Re I'll just scroll through. But when it's like you know, you, you're picking up different words as you're scrolling, and I just go. <laughs> but when you're feeling like you know you're a bit down about it anyway, vulnerable. It's just it? it's just like that, and it, and and that kind of ends the trait. The same thing I did Wayne Rooney on my podcast, and I said to him, I "Ask you a question." I went, "How do you deal with the criticism?" And he was like, "Well, you know," I said, "Because you put a tweet out the other day, and I read the replies, and and it was horrible. I mean, I talked about his." wife his yeah, sons yeah. he's like and he went oh, obviously i don't don't read those and i was like what at all he went no he went why would i read those and i'm like oh shit yeah <laughs> you know, and it was just like, in my head i think i don't know you personally someone to take it personal i don't read them I, yeah. I get i get loads of comments i don't read them point blank unless i'm told what's being said i think after the weekend uh, the Liverpool, the amount of racist abuse I, I apparently got was second to none. I was like, I don't give a shit. Mm. Uh, it, because I don't know them personally. If, so, if that's their problem, not my problem. Mm. And they, they, I think in, if your attitude is that, then they, they'll give it you more be, and then it bounces off yeah. eventually. But, but then, I but don't read that shit. But I'm how mad is it that people even have the ability to that's do it? That's the problem. You know, and, that, and, that, and really, but all I'm getting at is life is better when you just stay focused on yourself and yeah, the things man. that matters instead of worrying about what people say or yeah. opinions that people have. And this goes back to the kids mm -hmm. because someone might put, you know, my daughter might make a TikTok, right? And then someone goes, oh, that was, that was rubbish and you looked fat in that dress, yeah. right? Just an example. Mm -hmm. And they'll go, oh, well, you're whatever. And it's just, that could change the way they're feeling. Mm -hmm. That could influence their day, their week, Right, a decision they make, anything. So that that is why it's so important when you talk about you are what you can. That that's a great example. And life mm. is better. My life is much better when I don't read that. Yeah, do you know what I mean? But where it's my job and I need to know what fans are thinking and what's happening on you know stuff like that. It's, it's very addictive, you know. And like my screen time is so bad because I don't work off a laptop. I, I work off my now. phone. I know, but but I don't know what else to do. You know, when you're on a flight, right? Or you're on a train or whatever like that, and you sort of sit down. And you go, oh, you know, and I sit down and I might have a nine hours, and I go, oh, lovely. 
<laughs> like that, yeah. And it's like, no, and I say to myself, don't listen, you've got nine hours here, right? Put it on the side, nice film, glass of red wine, little sleep, you know, yeah, yeah, okay. Like watching a film, like five minutes in. You know, and that's not to check Twitter. That's to check WhatsApp. If a fight's yeah. been made, if he's signed, you know, if that contract's gone through. But, but, but as you said at the beginning, we make life too complicated. Mm. And and even your girls, you could simply say to them, "Look, just just get it into the head. You don't know these people personally. They don't know who you are when you're at home and with your mates. So don't take it personal. So then you look at them like like no disrespect. You think you're an idiot. You don't know mm. me. Mm. Say all you want. And Brendan used to teach us that in the gym. In our gym, the language was very industrial. Black this, flaggy is this, that you've got everything. He, he encouraged it in the gym because he said, when you go out to fight and your opponent's there and his fans are there, they're going to shout you, blah, blah, and you're, you're going to get old. So you've got to be able to ignore that and think, ah, you're just saying that for whatever reason. You can't beat them with the guy in front. And and two, down, down to the left, I got it in Australia, got it in, I got it in, 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 in Doncaster on my doorstep, got it everywhere. But I actually laughed it off. I'm, I'm, so what I'm saying is, you, you get to the point of actually, that doesn't mean shit to me. I don't know you. I'm getting my job done. And when you've done your job, you might get some abuse when you're coming out. But I don't know him. Mm. So I just think, but why would I take but, that shit but personally? But you think of, of all those experiences that you had that have made you strong like that and resilient, those kids, like, they haven't. So the one, like, it, it can just be one thing. Yeah. You know, when we talk about the power of positivity of being able to change someone's direction, it's the same the other way. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Someone can dampen your flame exactly. and actually ruin <clears throat> ruin your your appetite and your drive by the negativity. Mm -hmm. And that's why you're better off just... But if you're not on social media and you're a kid and you're a teenager, ain't good you ain't really got no yeah, life. Yeah, they they yeah, think exactly. literally they have no life. Damned yeah. if you do, damned if you yeah. don't. And yeah. But I guess this is we a definitely key put thing, the world yeah. to rights in this podcast. Yeah. So far, <laughs> <aren't we? laughs> but this is a thing to wrap it up. I mean, I guess that's a really good place to, to end it there because... Like we were saying, um, what social media can do, the negativity, the positivity, all you need is mental strength, mental resilience. And I think you can get a lot of that mental strength and resilience from doing not just boxing. I believe boxing is a sport where you really, really do get toughened up. You learn discipline. You learn a lot of things about yourself. But all sport can give you direction, can give you d discipline and, and can speaking, teach you mental and strength. Speaking to people. You've got to speak to one another as well. You just yeah, yeah, of course. Of but people. again, that's another thing. You get in a sport, you get camaraderie, you get friendship, mm. you get that family, you get you get so much out of it. So I think, you know, yeah, we have put the world to right, world to rights, but we've also illuminated that in this world, I think people, kids could do with a lot more sport. Yeah, but isn't it about as well understanding winning and losing? Like you go back to that kid at, yeah. at Brentwood Boxing Club and you, yeah? yeah. Those defeats... Those moments where you just fall, I'm fucking, like, I can't, like, I can't, I'm not good enough. I can't win. Or the pain of defeat. That's where the strength should be yeah. built. Yeah, but that's, there, it is. Yeah. No, but it is. And it goes back to, and I'm talking about myself, but it goes back to like the Conor Ben situation. Once you come through it, mm -hmm. you're actually like, fucking, what's <laughs> yeah. next? Yeah. 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 Is that all you fucking you got? Off. Do you know what yeah. I mean? And it's like, yeah. it actually start thinking, can't actually get much worse than that. It will. Mm. Somewhere down the line. <laughs> but but it's like, it just all those experiences. So I say to fighters all the time, when they make a ring walk, right? some fighters will make a ring walk for the first time and be petrified. Mm -hmm. The more you put yourself in a position in anything in life, the more you understand how to deal with it. Mm -hmm. right? So and that, and that goes down to everything, especially in boxing. It's a bit like people who have been in boxing or have, or have participated in boxing who are pros for so long about dealing with different situations in a fight. You saw it on Saturday night, a great example. Yeah. One guy who's just not really a boxer, like the reality is, is he was sort of put into boxing, Chris Eubank, yeah, yeah. but was tough as fuck, mm. had a granite chin, right? And had an, a, 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 a very strong mindset to go in and a belief to beat people mm -hmm. versus a guy that boxed since he was seven or eight, four brothers that have boxed, talks about boxing every day, mm. watches boxing every day. When he's in a fight, he knows exactly what to do. Now, sometimes there might be someone that's better at it than mm. him, right? When he gets backed up on the rope, he knows exactly how to defend. Mm. He knows exactly how to stay calm. He knows how to... And then you've got the other bloke who gets backed up with his chin in the air. As soon as the punch Reality is coming, has situation. absolutely yeah. no idea what he is doing. And when the when the fundamentals that made him so good get taken away from him via coaching mm -hmm. or particularly by father time mm. not the same fire right 
So, so, and and that's like when Roy Jones had the hump that, that I said I wasn't having to go at Roy Jones. Oh, I was I just saying that, the yeah. way that Roy Jones teaches <laughs> mm. is all wrong for Chris Eubank. Yeah, exactly. He's gone exactly. into the gym and he's going, what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to box and move. No, no. Worst idea ever. Do you can't you, do it. Do what you're good at. Yeah, do what you're exactly. Good at. And a yeah. little bit of that is also same with AJ, you yeah, know, yeah. Who, who had these wars, who go in and he was, a, he was a wrecker, got into a couple of fights and thought, I actually, I'm not going to get longevity in my career if I fight like that. Same with your style. If someone, yeah. so if you went to an aggressive trainer rather than Brendan that was I'd just like, smashed. right, Johnny, start walking them down and backing them up. And I'd have got no. smashed. But, but your, your attribute was your yeah. skill yeah, yeah. and the ability to not get hit and hit from angles. And so don't take that away from them, you know? But that's the same thing. They, the reason that Liam Smith can do that, Tyson Fury, another great example. Mm. The reason they can do it is because they've been there time and time again. Liam Smith's been backed up against the ropes by Canelo Alvarez. He's gone to war with Jaime Munguia. He's sparred hundreds of rounds. He's fought ABA championships. Mm. He's gone to Kazakhstan and Russia and lost yes, on depth. points. Exactly. Yeah. And that's the same no matter what you do. When I did my first ever press conference in big time boxing, I think it was Hay Harrison or it was McCloskey against Amir Khan. I ended up having a row with everyone. I could, my hands were shaking so Shitting much. Yourself, I had yeah. to put, when I was speaking, I had to put, I sat like this. Right? And I was I just leant forward <laughs> on the mic and no one would have ever known. And I could feel my arms like going like this. And I'm thinking, I've got Oscar De La Hoya there and I've just gone for it. I'm saying, you, you've you cost your client millions. You Remember they lost the deal with Sky because they yeah, yeah, yeah. couldn't put an undercard yeah. together. I said, you you put it on prime time. Remember they, they they moved from Sky to prime time. When that's like, he went, oh, you know, when I left HBO for Showtime, I went, you're comparing prime time to Showtime and HBO and the president of primetime was down the end and I was just like but I, I finished and I couldn't stop shaking <laughs> right? but then the next one oh yeah, and, you know watched it back and then and then now I go into press conferences and now no promoter in the world now chairs a press conference they have a broadcaster that will ask the questions cop out right it's like it's a skill and when I sit down with 14 fighters I've not thought about, I've not written down, I've absolutely no fucking idea what I'm going to say. And the bloke at the black goes, three. And I go, fucking hell, right. And I go, right. I look down at him and I know he's had eight fights, he's won seven by knockouts yeah. and the bloke he's fighting has had six fights. And I don't even know how I know. I mean, this is, that, that's my skill. Mm. I'm not very good at a lot of other things. That is my skill. I don't know mm. how I do it, but it's a passion for boxing to consume information. He probably is sitting there on the plane, going through box rec, looking at fights, doing that, doing that. But putting yourself in the positions. The reason that I'm good at press conferences is because mainly because I've done 48,000 of them, mm. you know? Practice. But it doesn't come, It, you know, Johnny didn't just turn up and win a world title. There's a story behind why he won and why he was able to go to, like I said, Germany, to Australia and overcome those things because of what he went through along the way. And that today, people need to know that today as well. There ain't no success without hard work. And that's another thing social media does for you, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. There's no success without hard work. With you two guys here, you both have your stories. Before we stop, Eddie, I just want to ask you, I have to ask you this. The YouTube boxing scene mm. at the minute, I know you promoted the uh, first pro version. It was Logan Paul KSI, yeah. wasn't it? What do you think of that's going? It seems do you think it's a good thing. Is it going from strength to strength? I know you've been asked this loads, but yeah, obviously you've got KSI feelings, and that really, doing I, the I did, Yeah, I did. I did Logan Paul against KSI at the Staples Center in LA. Mm. Massive, made a fortune, and the numbers were huge. But I felt really uncomfortable doing mm. it. Like I enjoyed it, and I, I respect those guys massively. Geniuses, by the way. Mm -hmm. But when I was like doing the presser, and you know, KSI would go, "Yeah, well, you know." your mum like this to sort of Logan Paul and I was like oh. just sort of dying in my seat and then and then it went away for a couple of years and I did I actually promoted Jake Paul's first fight as yep. well it was just on one of my undercards oh yeah okay yeah. I quite what I don't mind about this is it's misfits it's his, it's his own thing so with that what I thought was I'm gonna I had on that undercard of KSI Logan Paul mm -hmm. I had Devin Haney Defending his world Tyler's title. Mental, Billy yeah. Joe Saunders defending yeah, his world yeah. title. Right, well, all the mad guys. thing is, Jake Paul and Cole got bigger bigger, bigger props than, than the real fighters. Yeah. So, <clears throat> but I wanted to sort of incorporate everything so that those fighters could get the benefit of that fan base. Mm -hmm. What's going on now is it's like a separate thing. Yeah. That's why I don't really mind it so much. 
not professional boxing, not even real boxing, mm -hmm. celebrity boxing, mm -hmm. really. The one thing that I'm a little bit uncomfortable about when you talk about celebrity, boxing's not tennis, like a celebrity game of tennis. Mm -hmm. Someone could get hurt. Yeah. But what I do see is a lot of the old school referees, um, Kenny, you can't remember the, the, the guy and like Mickey Van and bit, people like that. You see them popping up. So and, and, and when a fighter got hurt, I like the way that the doctors were in straight away. So that that's important to me. What you can't take away is the the positive effect. When we talk about what we consume, these guys are heroes, role models mm -hmm. to that younger generation. Bizarre as it may be. You know, I, I don't want my daughter to have a hero that is a, 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 a TikToker. Right? Nothing against them. But I want her to look up to Beth Mead or someone that won the Euros in for England football or something like that. Uh, but I'm a sport person, yeah, right? Yeah, of course. So, but the, the reality is when we talk about driving people to the gyms, there is every chance that the younger generation are looking at KSI or Slims or my favourite, Salt Pappy, right? <laughs> the and, go, and go in, oh, they're, bo they're, they're all Joe Boxing. And the one thing I say about those that community is they're putting the work in. I was going to say right? they're working hard. A lot of them are useless, mm. but they are training and they are sparring and they're, they've fallen in love with boxing as well, right? As, like we all have, you know. As long and, as they stay in the lane, yeah. because I think, like you spoke about Eubank against uh, uh, Smith, you know, you saw a kid that 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 got to where he got to for whatever reason he got to against somebody that had depth of talent and knowledge of the sport. As long as they stay in the lane and and, and stay with their own because they mm -hmm. didn't step out of it, and all of a sudden they think, you know what, I'm King Kong. I want to fight yeah. a, a, a top ten real fighter. That's when someone's going to get hurt. I mean, well, as, cringe, what... as cringe as it might be, they've got belts now. Yeah, right. They that thing. The, the... So, but that's all right because it's like one of them, <laughs> I saw one of them post yesterday going. Slims has vacated the yeah, misfits vacated belt, belt. And I, belt, yeah, and I'm gonna, yeah. and it's like, <clears throat> but at least he's not going. Put me in with yeah. Manny Pacquiao. Yeah, so yeah. And Jake, Jake Paul's different, and Jake Paul's not horrendous. But and by the way, what fighters have got to stop doing is feeling this that that like these guys have no right yeah, to yeah. be doing yeah, this. Right. No, the reality is, you've got the right to do whatever, whatever you, want. you want, and if yeah, you've yeah. built a profile. To, to, you know, and you can monetize yeah, by punching right, maybe each other. Yeah and, yeah, and by the way, and then you turn into Jake Paul, who is a lot better than a lot of away fighters that I would bring over for a young prospect, right? <laughs> yeah. And what, so, what, you know, the, one of the great things about boxing is there are no barriers to enter. Mm -hmm. That's for a fighter, for a trainer, for mm -hmm. a manager, for a promoter. People pop up all the time in boxing. Hi, I'm the new advisor for so-and-so. Fucking hell, where'd you come from? <laughs> oh, I don't really, I've got this insurance business and I met him down the gym and now I'm negotiating with you. And I'm like, oh, kill me. You know, so, so same thing for them. Yeah. Jake Paul puts the work in, yeah. in boxing. But I like the way that it's being completely separatized, mm. if you like, from, this from is, professional it, boxing. It is what it is with that, because I must say, I watched it. And danger to for me, boxing. It's a danger for boxing. because fight, I, fight, Fighters need to learn from what the YouTube They do, doing. but also, Johnny, the, the promote. Pro, Fighters, promoters, managers need to learn. Yeah. You have to make the fights. Yeah. Right? When you have Eubank Smith and you look in the arena and it's packed and there's stuff like that, great. Boxing's wow, boxing's big. AJ fights at the O2, packed. Wow, wow, boxing's big. When you're not making the fights and fans are starting to lose interest and then the younger generation, rather than the generation coming up, going towards and watching professional boxing, all these great fights, they go the other way. Yeah. They're, they're kind of lost right after yeah. that. So we've got to make sure. And the broadcasters... Like, you know, I see the numbers because obviously I'm involved with the same. I mean, you know, the broadcasters are looking at it and saying, wow, look they're, at those They're numbers. more interested in the numbers. And, and, and the cost. And by the way, yeah. what fighters have also got to stop thinking is that these guys, particularly the undercard guys, are making 20 times what yeah. I'm making. No, you're making more. The, the, you, know, you know how good fighters have got it yeah. at the moment, right? The purses are out of control because of the competition between the promoters. There are fighters, you know, Salt Pappy or whatever his name is, probably made 10 times less than some British world champions that mm -hmm. are fighting at the moment, yet would drive 10 times more ticket sales, 10 times more subscriptions. Oh, they're not getting, you're not getting no, paid no, very well then. KSI fairly. and Logan Paul and people like that. They're, mate. They're gonna... But these guys, but fighters have to understand, like value is important and, and you have to drive your value, but you have to be in great fights. And if you haven't got the following, and if you don't drive numbers and if you don't drive subscriptions, 
you've got to be in real fights and you've got to be good enough. Mm -hmm. You know? And that's the only way. Johnny was never a ticket seller, mm -hmm. really. So he had, to, he had to do things the hard way. Mm -hmm. Take tough fights, go on the road, be an away fighter, all that kind of stuff. That's just situation you're in. If you can fill out arenas and you can sell... You know, if you're Johnny Fisher... And you can sell 2,000 tickets every time you fight. You're going to get easier fights in your development. Mm. Right? But if you don't, tough shit. You're going to have to be in tougher fights yeah. if you want the money. Mm. Because everything's about value and what you drive. So these guys, I, I, I don't mind it. I mean, I, I do I do laugh when I see, you know, the fight community just lose their shit over <laughs> it. <you know? laughs> That's the funny but thing. But I, I, I do also understand that as well. But, yeah, you know, but what it's I was the world say, we live in. Yeah. As long as they take it seriously, as long as they respect the sport, as long as they, you know, certain things are done in the right way, and as long as we distinguish the difference, and, and what we need to do is, when all of a sudden there's a show and DAZN had another, I don't know, four hundred thousand subscribers, mm -hmm. we need to market in a way that those four hundred thousand, or at least a hundred of them, watch Lee Wood against Maurizio yeah, Lara, yeah, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You watch that. You like boxing? Yeah, I do like boxing. Well, okay, watch this, mm -hmm. right? But if the big fights aren't getting made. We can't show them the greatness of the sport. Mm. So that's an example. And where, it's encouraging you know, kids to get away from that PC and what just and gaming, yeah. thinking I'm gonna go in the gym. Yeah, I'm gonna go in the gym because but that, that's what it I could today. genuinely help that. Like, that but, is, those, but those guys, KSI, all those people, have got to spread mm. the gospel of they of going down the gym. Bit, of, yeah, of, yeah, 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 yeah. I must say that. Uh, what I was gonna say? Like my last comment on that. It is good because it is very uh, d distinctive. It's completely different, um, that Misfits show. It's almost a little bit WWE. It is. Did you watch yeah. it? It's like the one thing the I will say is what everyone keeps talking about about boxing. People are in their seats at six yeah. and leave at 11. They the whole thing, didn't yeah. they? In, in our, in our I've world. I've never seen no, that. No, but I've in our world, that. they turn oh. up, their mates on, then yeah. they go for a pint. Yeah. Yeah. And like, you know, like, You'll know, see parents saying oh. things with a packed lunch and the kids oh, are there. They're all like clapping like this. Honestly, I give them their due. It's a good show. They make it. And it is a little bit slapstick. It is what it is. And you just watch two. Don't take, it too up. They don't take yeah. it too seriously. They don't take themselves seriously. So yeah, it's good fun. So we're going to see you in there then, Eddie. I know you're in the gym. Um, <laughs> we're going to see I, you in the celebrity I, I, I do there. watch it and think, I, I would love to do it because I'd just like to do the training. Yeah. You know, I'd like yeah, to do yeah. like an eight week camp where you can actually get yourself in great condition. But the problem is, like I always say to my old man, you know, when I had that bit of beef with Leonard Ellaby. Yeah. I, went, oh, yeah, 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 I yeah. said to my old man, I went, I'll fight him, you know. <laughs> and he went, he Is went, that how you would want to fight he went, now? Ed, he went, you're useless. He went, <laughs> he went, you will get chin, right? And I went, yeah, but how much? I said to him, how much have I got to get to do it? He went, nothing. He went, if you get chinned, he went, you're over, you're done. He went, don't True. even think about it. So I was like, 10 mil? He's like, <laughs> but I, I, I would, I'd love to, I'd love to experience the buzz. Yeah, I'm having man. a fight, but, yeah, I'm, so, uh, but I am useless. It's the wrong so, place yeah, to realise you've made a mistake yeah, exactly, in yeah. the middle of a round. Yeah. So we're not going to get you calling him no, out on this no, show, no. no. Oh, Unless okay. you can find the 10 mil. Yeah. Yeah. Well, listen, Eddie, thanks so much for joining us on the show. Um, it was really good fun. No worries. Um, and to all of you guys at home, I really hope you enjoyed the show. Um, and please come back and join us again next week. Yeah.